Bonjour. So I'm going to take you through a few tips uh, about dealing with the chapitre préliminaire, the preliminary chapter of our textbook, Français Interactif. Quelques conseils pour mieux comprendre le chapitre. A few pieces of advice to better understand uh, the chapter. So first of all, um, uh, in uh, this chapter, you're going to have uh, uh, some notes about the phonetic alphabet and pronunciation. So the phonetic alphabet, l'alphabet phonétique, is the symbols that represent all the sounds that exist in French. So each language has its own sounds, right? And uh, French only uses certain sounds that exist in all of the languages of the world. For example, um, there is no th in French, there's no th in French, so those symbols, those sounds, aren't represented uh, in the chapter and in the language. So uh, let's have a look at those uh, symbols really quickly. So uh, the symbols that exist in French are these. So uh, first of all, you have uh, three columns here. So the first column is les voyelles, vowels. The next column is les consonnes, consonant, uh, and then les semi-consonnes. So first of all, les voyelles, vowels. They're called vowels because they're made with pure voice. Les consonnes, uh, they're called consonants because they're sounded with vowels usually. And uh, semi-consonnes are somewhere in between the two. We don't know whether to call them semi-vowels or semi-consonants or what because there's other stuff going on than just pure voice coming out of your mouth when you make those sounds. So column number one, les voyelles. So first of all, first one is uh, what the doctor tells you to do when he puts that stick in your mouth when he examines you, right? You have to open your mouth and you go, ah, ah, pa. So that's what that is, ah, pa. The next one is also an ah, but it's a little more open, ah, ah, ah. So you just drop your jaw a little bit more and make more of an open sound, pa. Next one is, and I don't know if you're too young to remember this, but this is the sound that the Fonz used to make when he'd walk into a room. When he'd walk into a room, he'd go, e. So that's that, e, bli, e, 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 bli. Next one is eh, 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 like in maybe like Fred uh, uh, in English, eh, 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 bet, le. So uh, there you go, eh. And the next one is e, 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 like feel. And then the next one is o, 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 like sol. Next one is a rounded o, 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 bo, do. Uh, next one is o, 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 like owls, the sound that owls make, o, 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 tru. Next one is, um, you have to make a tiny little circle with your lips, and that's u. It's like the sound that French owls would make, I guess. Uh, mur. And then the next one, your jaw drops a little bit, and you get uh, bleu, bleu, bleu. Next one is uh, 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 jaw drops some more. Fleur. And uh, the next one is kind of, um, uh, it looks like a schwa, right? So, renaître, 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 renaître. The uh, next four are uh, very, very typical of French, and those are the nasal sounds, les nasales. So the first one is whenever an I and an N or an I and an M come together, uh, they make a an uh sound. Uh. You don't really hear the N being pronounced, right? So uh, uh, they come together, and it kind of rings in your nose, right? So pa, fa. It's the an uh sound. The next one is when A and N or A and M come together, and that makes a ah, uh, ah uh sound, like blanc, blanc, right? And then uh, next one is when O and N or O and M come together, they make a oh, oh, oh sound. So it's uh, even deeper, even more of a ringing sound than ah. Uh, it's on, oh, on, oh, like mo. And then the next one's almost like a grunt uh, uh, sound. It's when U and N or U and M come together, and that makes a ah uh, sound, ah, uh, parfum. Parfum. You hear you don't you don't really hear the M being pronounced. It makes a nasal sound. They come together and make one sound. Un parfum. So uh, next column over here is les consonnes. Les consonnes consonants. So really quickly, a tip about consonants is you'll notice this in French. Uh, it's that in English we tend to use a lot of air. We're kind of the windbags of the world when we talk, and we waste a lot of air when we talk. So uh, in consonants, we typically exaggerate the consonants in English, but in French, they're much more subtle. The attention is actually paid to the vowels uh, uh, in French. So uh, um, in, these are more subtle than you would get them uh, uh, in English. So first one is plein, plein, 
plat. Next one is bois, so bu bu bu, we have that. Next one is de de de, we have that too. Don. Next one is te te te, tige. Next one is que que que, clair, kiwi. So um, uh, it's represented by the letter C or K, uh, just like in English writing. Uh, next one is g g g, gar. Next one is fi, we have that too, the F sound. Uh, Elephant, ph, uh, makes the F sound uh, in French as it does uh, in English. Next one is sac, sac, bus. Next one is um, what the librarian tells you to do if you're talking too loud. Shabu, right? Next one is ver, all right? Careful with ver, and if you go up to the second one in that list, bois, right? Especially for you Spanish speakers out there, there is a difference between b -b -b bois and v -v -v ver, all right? So uh, uh, two different sounds. So b -b -b as in bois, the second one in the list, your lips are coming together, b -b -b. but v -v -v ver, your lower lip is touching your teeth, right? So ver, right? Bois, ver. And then uh, next one is zebra, we have that too. Next one is jeune, je, 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 jeune, right? So like in Jacques or Gigi. Next one is larme, larme. And the next one is the problem sound that people always get scared of in French. And it's the R sound. There's actually not just one R sound in French. Um, there are several different R sounds. And people make different R's depending upon what kind of French they speak. So, um... You can kind of do whatever you want. But uh, I usually tell students to go r, 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 root, right? And uh, you might be scared of making that sound. So what you probably want to do is take your hand and put your hand on your throat right here and make the g, 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 g sound like when you do the word gargle in English. G, 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 gargle, right? So you feel that little thing constricting in your throat there when you go g, 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 gargle, gargle, g, g, g. Well, you're going to make that same sound, basically. You're just not going to let that constrict all the way. G, 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 r, 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 g, r, g, r. It comes from the same place, all right? That's how you do a French R. So there you go. Root, root. Uh, next one is mud, mud. We have that too, M sound. N, 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 nut. And uh, next one is like the ñ in Spanish. Compagne, ñ, ñ, ñ. It makes a ñ sound. And next one is uh, like ing, ing in English. We have that too. Jogging, jogging, jogging. Uh, and then les semi consonnes, les semi voyelles, whatever you want to call them. Uh, first one is yo 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 yo, like yellow. Uh, next one is cui cui, kind of makes a humming sound. Cui cui. Next one is oui oui, like water. Next one is uh 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 uh. Uh, next one is wa, as in victoire, wa. So it starts with a w sound, right? So wa. So there's all your voyelles, your consonne, and your semi voyelle or your semi consonne. Next, uh, I just want to uh, point out some other things uh, uh, for you here. So as I already mentioned, vowels get more attention than they do in English, um, uh, and consonants are more subtle. So if you were to take a piece of paper uh, uh, and say in English, pizza, you see the paper move, right? Pizza. Well, in French, when you say pizza, the, the paper wouldn't move, right? So more subtle consonant sounds uh, 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 in French than in English. Those four nasal sounds, careful with those. Practice those especially. Um, and here's a little phrase to help you remember all four nasal sounds right there. So uh, un bon vin blanc. Do you know what that means? A good white wine, right? So uh, when you say un bon vin blanc, you're actually using all four nasal sounds. Un is the first one, on is the second one, un is the next one, and on is the last one. Un bon vin blanc. So now you know how to order a good white wine, right? So uh, then uh, another note to remember when you're pronouncing things uh, uh, in French is that typically French is a language that has uh, something called la syllabation ouverte, open syllable language, right? So uh, syllables typically start with a consonant sound and end with a vowel sound. So consonant vowel, consonant vowel, consonant vowel, consonant vowel. It's one of the things that makes French so pretty uh, is its standard pronunciation, right? In fact, if something would happen in the language to where um, uh, that pattern wouldn't happen, where it wouldn't be consonant vowel, consonant vowel, consonant vowel. French sometimes finds itself crazy little ways to force itself into that consonant vowel, consonant vowel pattern. You'll see more about that as we work through all these chapters of Français Interactif. 
And then uh, uh, another note, something that happens in French is liaison, liaison. Liaison is the concept of linking, right? So you link a final consonant sound into a beginning vowel sound, right? So, and it helps with that consonant vowel, consonant vowel pattern right there. So with this phrase right here, if I were to say just these four words by themselves, the first one is comment, the next one is vous, the next one is appelé, and the next one is vous. But when you put it all together and you want to do that consonant vowel, consonant vowel, consonant vowel business that I just mentioned, you get comment vous appelez-vous. So you see what I did there? Vous appelez, vous appelez. I'm doing liaison. I'm pronouncing something that normally isn't pronounced by itself. It's vous, right? But because that ends in a consonant and the next word starts with a vowel, I'm doing liaison and making a z sound right there. Comment vous appelez-vous? All right. Uh, another example would be if you want to say that you're a student uh, and you're a guy, you would say je suis étudiant. Right. If you're a girl, you would say je suis étudiante. Je suis étudiant. Je suis étudiante. All right. So I do liaison right there. Those three words by themselves. Je suis étudiant or je suis étudiante. But put them all together and you get je suis étudiant or je suis étudiante. All right. So that's the concept of uh, liaison. Back really quickly to that last uh, question that I just asked you. Comment vous appelez-vous right there? Uh, you notice uh, in some of those words and in the words of the examples where we're doing the phonetic alphabet over there, when you get to final consonants, uh, um, you're looking at comment, you're thinking, well, we're not going to do anything with that T. You're looking at the word appelé, and you think, well, we're not going to do anything with that Z. What about the S and the end of the last word, vous, right? Are we going to do anything with those? No. Well, in French, you usually don't pronounce final consonants, right? So final consonants, don't touch, all right? So don't pronounce those at all. So uh, that word is comment, right? So don't pronounce the final consonants right there. Um, in fact, uh, usually if a word ends in C, R, F or an L, those are the ones you do pronounce, right? C, R, F, L. So be careful and uh, make sure you pronounce words that end in C, R, F, or L. Pronounce that C, pronounce that R, pronounce that F, pronounce that L, but typically don't pronounce final consonants, okay? So those are some tips about the phonetic alphabet and uh, pronunciation. All right, moving on, you also have in this chapter uh, l'alphabet français, the names of the letters in French, right? It's the same uh, letters, they just have different names, right? So a few things to be careful with, uh, 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 be careful with uh, uh, the names of those two letters right there, right? So the first one is what? In French, it's G, G, G. And the next one is G, 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 right? So don't confuse those two, G. Uh, uh, if you need uh, a little tip to help remember which one is G, well, uh, uh, the letter that comes right before G is E. And those two rhyme, E, G, E, G. So uh, just remember E, G, those two rhyme. And the next one is G, G, G. You kind of got to memorize them, right? So just recite them to yourself. Memorize them and uh, recite them, right? Um, and uh, we'll look at the names of the accents in just a second. Accents are a part of spelling. There are five accents in French, diacritical marks. So a word without its accent is spelled wrong. And in fact, sometimes a word without an accent means something other than the word with the accent. So be careful with that. Make sure you include the accent mark if there needs to be one there. All right, and we'll look at how to spell a word uh, in just a second. So uh, these are the five accents in French. So the first one is called l'accent aigu, l'accent aigu, l'accent aigu. Right there, there's a word with two of them in it, right? So that word, you know how to say that word? Eté, eté, eté. So if you have a final E that has an accent mark on it like that, you do have to pronounce that E, right? So eté, eté, there you go. L'accent aigu is et. Now, you may have noticed um, that I pronounced the T sound in when I said l'accent aigu. Why did I do that? Liaison. I did the linking thing, right? That first word by itself is just l'accent. Next word is aigu. Put them together. L'accent aigu. All right? Careful with liaison. Next is l'accent grave. Notice I didn't make a T sound right there. I didn't do liaison because grave doesn't start with a vowel sound, right? L'accent grave, l'accent grave. There you go. And uh, this word, fève, has an accent grave on the first E right there. Fève, 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 right? 
Do you know what a fev is? Maybe not. Well, it's kind of timely in this season because people are eating king cakes right now. And inside a king cake, there's a figurine, the fev, right? So uh, that's what that is. Uh, and then next one is uh, a little rooftop accent that happens on vowel sounds. L'accent circonflex. L'accent circonflex. And that kind of stretches out the vowel, makes it a little more open sounding. Ma, ma is that word right there. And fortunately for us uh, in English, if you put an S right after the vowel that has an accent circonflex on it, that'll help you figure out what the word means lots of times. So if we put an S right after that A, we would know that in English that word means mast, like a mast on a ship, right? So uh, uh, there you go. Hôpital, same thing. We know that's hospital, hôpital. So next one is la CD. That just turns a, a C into a soft C sound, makes an S sound, right? So like in the word for the name of the French language, français, or it's an adjective also, français, français, la CD, makes a hard C sound into a soft C sound, an S sound. Next one is le tréma. It's the two dots, the diursis, right? So usually the tréma is used to indicate that there are two separate vowels going on. Don't cram them together and do one thing. Instead, give me two separate vowel sounds. So Noël, Noël, two separate vowel sounds, le tréma. And uh, uh, that's uh, the five uh, uh, accent marks in French. L'accent aigu, l'accent grave, l'accent circonflex, la cédille, and le tréma. So let's spell those words. So how do you spell a word? Well, you have to call out the letters, right? And you say the name of the accent right after the letter. So look at that first word, et. How would you spell that word, et? E, accent aigu, t, e, accent aigu. That's et. Next one is fève, and that would be f, e, accent grave, v, Next one, ma, m, a, accent circonflex, t. Next one, français, would be f, r, r, like the air we breathe, a, n, c, c, d, a, e, s. Next one, noël, n, o, e, tréma, L. Good. All right. So that's how you spell words. So you have to call out the letters and say the accent mark right after you say the letter. All right. Remember, include accent marks. They're a part of spelling. You need to know how to make accent marks and you need to know how to make them on a computer because there'll be quizzes and activities where you have to type things and you have to make ac accent marks uh, in our course in Desire to Learn. So uh, go ahead and look in uh, the beginning modules of our class and you'll see a nice little website that shows you how to do uh, accent marks in lots of different ways. Next, uh, the vocabulary of our chapter, right? A few things to look out for uh, with our vocabulary. I'll show you those in a second. How to study vocabulary. You want to alternate the way you deal with vocabulary in general, right? So sometimes you want to listen to it. Sometimes you want to read it. Sometimes you want to pause it and write them down. Maybe you want to make flashcards, all right? Um, uh, but most of all, say the vocabulary words. Repeat them. Say them out loud, all right? Uh, you're taking an online course, so uh, uh, lots of times you're probably by yourself. So that's great. Nobody will hear you making funny sounds, all right? So say these words out loud. Repeat them. Deal with them on a regular basis. Don't just listen to the vocabulary one time at the beginning of the chapter. Listen to it every other day or listen to a section every other day. However it is you need to deal with it. Maybe you want to make post-it notes and label your whole house uh, uh, with vocabulary words. That works for some people. Maybe you want to make online flashcards, right? So uh, you can do that too. So. Um, uh, be careful with how you deal with vocabulary. It'll help you remember. Also, when you're learning vocabulary, try not to associate a French vocabulary word with a translation of the word, right? So uh, the Italians have this wonderful phrase, traduttori, traditori, translators, traitors. So there's always something lost in translation, right? So uh, where you can, try to associate a French word with a picture of the word in your head. So if you have the word livre as a vocabulary word, uh, which means book, by the way, try to imagine a book or your favorite book or whatever in your head, and you'll know that livre means book without having to translate it yourself. Okay, so let's look at the list of vocabulary words for this chapter. I'll give you some pointers here. So that's not working. Come here. Hang on. Let me open that up for you. 
here we go. So uh, the vocabulary here, make that bigger for you. There. So the first section is je me présente. So you're introducing yourself uh, in this section of the vocabulary. So first phrase there is what you say when you give your name. Je m'appelle, je m'appelle, je m'appelle. So notice that it has two P's and two L's in it, right? So you'll see that in questions um, asked to you, for example, sometimes there's only uh, one L in it. That's because the verb, appel is the verb, uh, um, because the verb changes spelling sometimes, right? So, uh, and then when you say where you're from, je suis de, je suis de. Now, in your vocabulary list, they're giving you de, D-E, but if you're from a place that begins with a vowel or a silent uh, H, like Austin, for example, if you want to say you're from Houston, Houston, uh, you would say je suis de Houston, just like it is there. But if you're from Austin, that would be je suis d'Austin, so D apostrophe there. So French likes to be consonant vowel, consonant vowel, consonant vowel, and it finds itself crazy little ways to force itself into that pattern. So that's where you get Dustin, the apostrophe, Austin, right? But de Houston, D-E, just like that. Next one, je suis étudiant. Ha ha, liaison right there, right? So je suis étudiant, en, and then you give whatever subject, right? Français, math, whatever. So je suis étudiant en français. That's for a guy. For a girl, je suis étudiante. En français, je suis étudiante en français, right? Uh, girls, you have to pronounce the T sound, right? You don't really pronounce the E at the end. You pronounce the T. Uh, so étudiant is masculine, étudiante is feminine. Careful with the pronunciation of the word étudiant and étudiante. There's no S in there, Spanish speakers, be careful. I point out things to Spanish speakers because I have a lot of Spanish speakers who take my classes. So uh, uh, careful with that. Étudiant and étudiant. There's no estudiantes in this class, all right? Those are down the hall in another class, all right? So étudiant and étudiant. Next one, il s'appelle, elle s'appelle. So il is the subject, elle is a subject, il is for a guy, elle is for a girl. Il s'appelle, elle s'appelle, you're pointing them out. Il est deux, elle est deux. Il est étudiant en, elle est étudiante en, right? So, il est, elle est, careful with that second word right there, e. It's just e by itself, e. So, you don't pronounce the s, you don't pronounce the t. If you wanted to, you could do liaison right there. Il est étudiant, elle est étudiante. That kind of sounds kind of snooty, uh, in my opinion, but it's perfectly fine to do either way. Il est étudiant, uh, uh, elle est étudiante, whatever you prefer, either one. Next one is les matières, subjects, right? Careful with subjects. So you notice all these have articles with them because you'll see in chapter one that every noun has a gender, right? So it's either masculine or feminine. So they give you the article when you learn a noun. So don't just learn commerce, learn le commerce. And that way you'll know that commerce is masculine. We'll talk more about grammatical gender later on. Uh, just for now, when you learn a noun, learn an article with it. Le commerce. La comptabilité, comptabilité, don't pronounce the P, comptabilité, has an accent on the end, so you have to do something with the E at the end, comptabilité, comptabilité, and uh, um, you'll notice that when I pronounce words for you, you might be thinking, well, where do I put the emphasis, which syllable has the strong uh, 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 emphasis on it, right, so listen to that, le commerce, la comptabilité, Les matières, whatever. Any French word you say, bonjour, it doesn't matter. Uh, the emphasis is always on the last syllable. Well, that makes life easy, right? So uh, there are languages out there that do a lot of work to show you which syllable gets the right uh, uh, emphasis. And imagine in English. In English, we never know. There's so many exceptions. You know, is it information? Is it information? Is it information? Is it information? Well, I don't know. So uh, there's tons of exceptions in English, right? Uh, but in French, it's pretty regular. It's always on the last syllable. Le commerce, la comptabilité, les matières, it doesn't matter. Always on the last syllable. Next, l'anglais, 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 le français, le français, l'espagnol, l'espagnol, la littérature, l'histoire, l'histoire, while is one of those semi-voyelles or semi-consonnes that we looked at, la géographie, la géographie, les sciences politiques, les sciences politiques, don't pronounce final consonants, right? So don't touch that S at the end of science. Don't touch that S at the end of politique. Les sciences politiques. Les mathématiques. Les mathématiques. 
Notice it's mathematic and not uh, uh, like in English, mathematics, because there's no th uh, uh, in French, right? Mathematique. So even though you write it with th, you say t, 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 les mathématiques, les maths. Les sciences, la biologie, la biologie, la chimie, l'informatique, l'informatique, la musique, la philosophie. La psychologie. That one's kind of weird, huh? La psychologie. So if you're having trouble with that one, just do la psychologie. La psychologie. La psychologie. Uh, L'alphabet français is there, right? So those are the letters. These are the names of the letters. A, B, C, D, E, F. What's that next one? G, G, right? H, E, G. Those two rhyme. K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, R, like the air we breathe, S, T, U, turn it in a circle with your lips, U, 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 V, W, X, Y, Z. And also uh, in this vocabulary list, you have the names of the animals that you'll see as characters uh, uh, in the textbook, right? So there's les animaux, les animaux, les animaux. I'm doing liaison right there, les animaux. That first word is les, next one is animaux. Les animaux together. Le cafard, le cafard, don't pronounce the D. Le chat, le chat, don't pronounce the T. La chatte, it's feminine, you do pronounce the T. La minette, la minette. Next one is might be difficult for you. Uh, break it down. L'écureuil, 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 l'écureuil. Uh, if it's any consolation, French speakers have trouble saying the word squirrel uh, in English. Squirrel is a very weird thing to do uh, in English. And I guess l'écureuil is kind of difficult for you too. That's okay. L'escargot, 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 l'escargot. Don't pronounce the final T. La fourmi, la fourmi, and le tattoo. So that's the vocabulary of the chapter right there. So let me move back to our PowerPoint here. And uh, what does it all mean to you? Well, you may want to focus, uh, for this chapter anyway, on the vocabulary uh, that's relevant to you, like the classes that you're studying, the things that you're majoring in, uh, etc. You don't have to know all the names of all the subjects in the world. Not a big deal, all right? If you can say you're studying French, if you can uh, maybe mention some other languages like English or Spanish or something like that, you should be good to go um, uh, in whatever uh, classes you're taking and your major, okay? So uh, in general, as we continue to work our way through Desire to Learn, uh, uh, um, the preliminary chapter, uh, work your way through the content, right? So when you log in, click on content and then click on the modules uh, uh, inside, right? If you have any questions, contact me. Remember that in Desire to Learn, you can sign up for notifications. So it's a great little tool. If you go up to the top, click on your name, go down to the settings and notifications, you can add your cell phone number right there. And every time I post a new news item, for example, um, uh, which I do quite often, you can get a text message notification, you know, oh, I need to log in and go read that because that's important. Or every time I grade something, there's a new grade item, you can sign up for text notifications or email notifications, but students don't usually check their email as much as they do uh, uh, receive text messages. So that's why I recommend that you sign up for the text notifications. I think it says SMS uh, in Desire to Learn. So uh, that's it for the chapitre preliminaire. Au revoir, bonne continuation.